Welcome back to the world's worst fishing, everybody. I'm Chris Jones. It is hot. My God, it is hot. However, we're going to try to make an interesting uh, little doohickey today. We're going to try to make a big swim bait look like a juvenile Goliath grouper. Goliath grouper are one of the coolest fish on the planet. It's a 500 pound bass with black spots on it. Um, and I mean, there, I mean, what else can you say? I mean, a fish the size of a Volkswagen is pretty cool. Um, so they're, they're kind of like a tan creamy yellow with some really awesome black patterns. So um, we're gonna have to do a lot of painting and brushing. It's gonna be a challenge. But if I can pull it off, this might be the coolest bait yet out here in the uh, world's worst fishing lab. So let's try and get started. All right, so here's what we have. We have two of these big swim baits. This is the seven inch bait uh, from Stinky Baits, Stinky X. And uh, we're gonna use a couple of different things here. So we're gonna use this white and yellow to try to get this kind of creamy yellow and then one side's gonna be brown. So we're gonna kind of, you know, because you see up here, there's a lot of brown in that fish. Um, so we're gonna kind of mix up our cream yellow here, our brown here, and then we're gonna transfer them to the divider cup. And we're gonna kind of pour like a splotchy, you can see it's kind of splotchy yellow and brown pattern um, for the body. And then we'll do as much as we can with some black pigment and the little paintbrush to try to get kind of the, the black splotchy marking effect um, that you see there on the body of the fish. So I have some dead-on plastic craw tube blend, um, the divider cup also from Stankex Baits. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be a heck of a challenge. Um, there is nothing simple at all about uh, a Goliath's markings. Um, I mean, it would be like trying to recreate a bass. And, uh, you know, I don't, I try to stay away from like actual paints. It's just really hard to do that without paint, but if I can pull it off, I think it'll be pretty unique. So, here we go. Okay, here we go. Crawl tube blend. Um, I want to get these fairly translucent if I can. So, let's see. One, two, three, maybe four drops of yellow. Oh, spilled one there. Let's go ahead and try to wipe that. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay. And then, oops, a little bit of white to offset it. It takes more white to offset a color. All right. Let's see what we get. Still need more white. Wow, that yellow is thick. Jeez Louise. Stuff goes a long way. <laughs> Most dead on colors do go a long way. Yeah, that's looking good right there. We're actually gonna spike this with a little bit of brown to brown it up. Just a little bit. Come on. Slewer Works Carolina Pumpkin. It's my favorite brown. Definitely my favorite brown that I have found. Alright, why can't I get any of it? I know I'm not out. There's plenty of it in there. What the heck is going on? Alright, appear we appears we have some sort of cloggage. Try this again. Okie doke. I'm not sure what's going on here, folks. Gonna have to uh, stick a hook down in there and see what's see what's happening. Hmm. Now let's we'll see if we can get some brown. Still no. What on earth? I've already used some of this today. All right, stand by, guys. I gotta fix this uh, container here. 
All right, I think I got it fixed. Yeah, here we go. One, two, three drops. Let's try three strikes. Yeah. Perfect. That, so if you look at that color. Oops. Yeah. That's kind of what we were going for. And then this other side is just going to be brown. But not a lot. Because we're going to, like I said, we're going to kind of blend those two in the divider cup. And, uh, and I don't want the brown to overpower the other ones. You can see I've mixed that a lot lighter. Okay. Because um, it, it does kind of have a splotchy effect. And um, that's going to be... That's going to be the trick here is to get that splotchy effect, but we're going to try our best. All right, so now we're, um, I don't actually, I don't need that one. We're going to pour these into the divider cup. All right. There we go. Okay. All right, here we go. Just going to kind of let the two colors just kind of thermally bond to each other, but I'm going to try to tilt it to pour more yellow than the brown, um, if I can. Yeah, you can see all that's doing right there. It's a little bubbly. I think I uh, just pouring it. Pouring it in, must have bubbled it up because it doesn't look too bubbly in the cup at all. All right. Oh, too fast there. I apologize if the bottom of that mold is not in frame. Okay. There's what we have. Might still be too much brown, but we'll see. Um, yeah, but those are our two colors there. Yeah, let's hope for the best. Hopefully one of them will come out right. That's kind of why I'm doing two, because I'm not super confident that I'll get one that looks good. Um, in fact, this one looks like it has too much brown in it. So, But who knows, maybe we can salvage it. We'll, we'll see what we can do. But uh, I really, really hope this turns out. I want to get a Goliath bait. I just think that would be super, super cool. And uh, and if these come out right, if any of you guys uh, fish a lot of saltwater and want to use these baits, um, you know, maybe jig them down on a wreck for grouper or for goliaths, uh, you know, holler at me. I'd love to, to sell these to you. I mean, I'm making them with some pretty firm plastic. Um, so, you know, you, you would definitely... Uh, I'm hoping it would survive at least a few nibbles before getting completely trashed, but who knows. And there's a few small bubbles on the top of that bait, so I can use my heat gun here, and um, it will actually pop those bubbles. Y'all probably seen me do this with silicone. Um, it does it with plastisol as well. So you can literally just kind of melt the bubbles away so to speak that's really only a big deal on the very top surface of the bait so yeah there we go looks like those popped all right yeah hopefully those won't be a problem anymore okay let's try and get one out let's just see we can get one out here. And uh, one plus about using firm plastic like this is that it does set up a lot quicker. Okay. Whew. Yeah, that's got like kind of a nice brown, just kind of random. It's, it's not necessarily splotchy. That's a little more striated. Here, let me get it more in the frame here. But, you know, if you imagine that with some of the black markings on it, um, that hopefully we'll be able to achieve with some pigment and powder then I think that might actually Maybe sort of kind of work, you know, the only thing that I can't really do without actual lure paint Is get all the black dots and marks that are on the tail. I mean, I mean if you look at the tail 
the tail has a lot of dark splotches on it you know I just if if I dab some of my pigment mix on there unless I cleared up over it there's just no good way to really set it in um, even with the heat gun so um, let's see here we go let's get the other one out come on come on come on okay come on out you come come on out you come Woo. hot 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 okay all right they are both in the bath so now comes the hard part is trying to recreate God here <laughs> and uh, try to put some cool markings that don't look like complete crap so we're gonna let those kind of cool off for just a minute and uh, we're gonna take some dead on plastic black color it and some black mica powder from lure works mix them up together here in a Michelob amber Bach cap and do some uh, bedazzling here and hopefully these will look sort of kind of like a juvenile Goliath grouper all right we have our powder and pigment mixed up what to do what to do so he's got like some kind of diagonal lines here um, and and they're just kind of random it looks like I mean I, I don't even know how to even start doing this it's just kind of it's just kind of here there and everywhere huh all the way down to his stomach and you know that's like they're they're just so random and you know, this this might not can even be done Do like a splotch there. What the heck is that? Get off my bait. Oh, what the heck that is? Okay. Yeah, you know, just kind of, kind of random markings, splotchy markings. like there there's more there's more black on there than you think like it is truly 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 a busy busy sort of pattern that these things have I mean there's just kind of stuff going here and everywhere you know dots around the eyes and you know, random dots it, it looks like there's more dots up front than there are in other places It's, it's just kind of very random and splotchy. I don't know that trying to make a specific pattern is almost the way to go. This pigment is like the perfect consistency to not get like overly uh, runny okay so we might like start the next kind of round of splotches maybe connect those a little bit but leave some holes in it there's like some see-through aspects to it and it's like they they kind of connect I like I like the way that that one right there kind of connects to itself or, or connects to the other one yeah this is definitely uh, gonna be gonna be interesting you guys but you know I just kind of think the more randomly I do it the more authentic it will kind of look Yeah, who knows? I mean, some things are very hard to recreate. You know? Nobody's 
Nobody's figured out a new Mona Lisa yet, right? Same thing here. Exactly the same thing here. This is just nothing but a fish Mona Lisa. I don't really like that, but I don't really know how else to do this. Yeah, and then there's definitely some dots back here in the back. And some more just kind of splotches. Okay. Boy, that's interesting. Um, we'll try to do this bait too, there. And uh, again, just trying to, I like how it's kind of angled. They kind of, the stripes kind of go that way, it, it seems. At least on this one. Having never seen one of these in person, you know, I can only go by pictures. Yeah, it's a very, very kind of random splotchy... splotchy deal. Well, y'all kind of get the drift now of what we're doing. So, I'll kind of leave it at here right now. And um, we'll just kind of come back later once we have some more of these painted up. And just kind of see if that maybe helps our cause. Maybe helps these look a little more authentic. All right. Well, we will meet you guys back once we kind of have both sides done, and then we'll take a look. All right, now I have the other two sides done, and uh, we're just gonna hit these with the heat gun to try to set that pigment in as best as possible. It is like really hard to try to get a random splotch pattern with no rhyme or reason to it. Like, I feel like it would be easier to try to paint like a, a figure than to try to recreate just random patterns that actually aren't random, but they are random. This is really, do I don't know how taxidermies do this crap. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna stop there and just kind of let that set. And uh, then we're gonna put some eyeballs on and hopefully these don't suck. Okay, I think those look pretty good. Um, okay, we're gonna try and pick up one of our groupers here <laughs> without splotching it too bad. Oh, okay, some Loctite gel. Oh, come on, don't do this to me. I lost the cap and now it... <clears throat> Okay, gonna have to put the grouper down and open up this cap. Stand by, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Loctite gel. Alrighty. And these are big eyes. These are 15 millimeter monsters. And um, I like the way that the actual pupil of the eye points in a direction. So I like to point it forward. It's just kind of how I've learn to like to do them that wasn't perfect a perfect set but that's okay now we're gonna do the other side okay come on baby yeah here we go perfect all right set that one aside Okay, let's get grouper number two. Old splotchy fish. All right. Next eye on there. Yeah. 
killer, killer, killer stuff. What do y'all think so far? Do these look okay? I, they actually don't look bad considering what I'm trying to do here. All right. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to set one there. Oh, gosh. That's the last thing you want to do is have one roll over. Set one there. Set the other one there. And then we're going to get ready to clear dip. Okay. Clear dip time. Moment of truth. Where are my little scissors? Hold on here. Here they are. Okay. Goliath number one. Got to get it all the way past all that pigment there. So basically halfway up the tail. You know, that's not half bad. All right. Just going to let it kind of drip off that front. And I like to clear it up in worm plastic or something or even finesse because it just it just kind of makes a, um, a thinner coat. Um, so it doesn't add too much weight or bulk, but it doesn't impend or, uh, or mess up, I think I'm saying peed or whatever, but it doesn't mess up the action of the bait um, near as much when it's a thinner dip. So, anyway, alrighty. A little bit of running there, but that's kind of to be expected. <laughs> Look at that. The angle of the camera is kind of wrong for this right now, but we'll get them in some better, uh, lighting here and angle here in just a minute okay just want to kind of cut off that nose if I can get it in the bath perfect all right we're going to move our clear dip that is very hot here's some of the leftovers of it <clears throat> okay there are our Goliath groupers. Okay, let's take a look. Actually, that needs to set up a little more. That's still kind of gooey, so I need to change the water in here. This is yesterday's water, and there's like crap in it, so no bueno. Always change your curing water, because that kind of looks like crap. We'll be back in a moment. All right, so I uh, changed the water out, so let's go ahead and clip off the noses there all right let's get the next one kind of pull it tight and then clip perfect all righty yeah little goliaths what do you guys think it's uh that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be let's see Ah, I'm gonna zoom out some. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... I, I, I like them. I think they look kind of like they're supposed to look, but I just don't know if it's really possible to to uh, do that right there. But, I mean, that that's not bad. I think I got kind of the body color pretty accurate. Um, it's just, man, those splotches, you just... Man. What a fish, though. I mean, a Goliath grouper is, I mean, just on everybody's bucket list of things to catch. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. But I'll tell you what, though. Put those on a massive jig head and, you know, bump them down there in a wreck. So I'm by to thinking it's a, it, it's a real grouper. I mean, am I taking crazy pills? I don't know. That's, that, I mean... That, that's a pretty good effort right there. Um, somebody will figure out a way to do it better. And when you do, please uh, holler at me and tell me how. Because <laughs> that could be really cool. And, I mean, it is really cool. But it could even be better, of course. Yeah, I mean, here's another baby Goliath grouper right there. I mean, that's it's really not bad, I guess. You know, just I, if, if these had fins, then I could get some of that detail up there in the fins and uh, and then maybe the tail, you know, just the, the, the tail is what's missing here is some of the black detail and markings in the tail 
just since I can't clear it at the tail, it's just, yeah, I can mark it with a bunch of stuff and it will just kind of rub off since there's nothing to protect it. Um, for that, I probably need actual lure paint, like I was saying. But uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of happy with those. The more, I the more I look at them, they're growing on me. And the more I compare them to pictures on the internet, the more I'm like, okay, if I'm whatever eats a little grouper in the ocean and this comes hopping by, I'm going to be like, boom, Goliath grouper snack immediately. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's going to wrap this video up. Shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Chris, those are good. Chris, those kind of suck. Um, if you want these, holler at me. I'm not going to take them to the salt water. I don't have the experience, tackle, or time. Um, but it would be so awesome to see somebody take something like this and, uh, and, and catch something on it. I don't really know what eats small grouper but everything kind of eats everything in the ocean uh, just on my limited experience so this could be next on the menu but thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe of course and uh thanks for your support that helps keep the channel going and we will catch you guys next time